the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Good morning, guys, and welcome to episode 100. We made it. We survived. Um, I want to thank everybody for all of their support, um, their words of wisdom, uh, their input, advice, information, uh, and also guidance. It's been absolutely great. Um, I never thought I'd get to 100 podcasts, to be honest with you. I kind of just started this on a whim. Um, and from there, you know, it's, it's grown to over 100,000 downloads. We're here at 100 episodes. Uh, and I hopefully, you know, everyone that I speak to is just very, very thankful for, uh, you know, getting this information out there. Because, you know, I think as we find here is sometimes there's conflict the information. Uh, they don't know where the sources are to get it, where are good people. Um, you know, as they say, your network is your worth here. So hopefully I've been able to give you guys some worth by uh, introducing you to some of my network anyway. But uh, again, if anybody has not given us a, uh, a review, a big thumbs up, it was very, very warm in the other day when I went into uh, Chartable uh, for podcasts and saw that we had 23 reviews there um, and all of them great. So thank you guys. I really, really appreciate that. It's just nice to to get that love back. Um, and we will continue to continue uh, to do these, getting great people on this podcast. So anyway, a lot of you have been asking about who's going to be on the 100 podcast. So today uh, we have Pedro Beirute. Many of you have probably never heard that name before, but Pedro is the CEO of Procomma and president of Costa Rica's brand essential Costa Rica. So he's responsible for the brand image of Costa Rica and attracting investment to this country at both a macro and micro level. He takes a lot of the free trade zones here, bringing big resorts here into Costa Rica as well. So we're going to be talking to him about what's happening at the macro level uh, in the globe, but also why he still thinks that Costa Rica is a long, has a long way to go with regards to being attractive to foreign investors. So this is going to be a very much you know, high level discussion here that we're going to be having on Costa Rica, where it's going in its future, uh, which I think might help quite a few of you, on, you know, uh, get an idea of you know, of what Costa Rica may be like in five to 10 years. Uh, I will put Pedro's contact details in the description below. Anyone can reach out to him as well there. Uh, and remember, uh, if you'd uh, like us to cover any other subjects going forward, please do let us know. But let's get straight into it. Good morning, Pedro. How are you doing? Hey, Richard. Happy to be here. No, thank you of doing us the honor and uh, blessing us with your time today uh, as we celebrate our 100th episode. As I'd mentioned, I didn't think we'd get to 100 episodes. I never even thought this when I started it, but uh, it's an absolute honor to have you on it. Very excited and very honored and grateful for this uh, opportunity to share uh, opportunities uh, to move, relocate or invest in Costa Rica. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get straight into it, Pedro. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, the global situation at the moment, you know, there's a, I would say that there's a lot of, um, you know, I suppose darkness. However, Costa Rica always seems to be shining bright. I mean, it's done absolutely great during the pandemic. But why, why is this? And what do you think that Costa Rica offers that other countries don't? Yeah, so if, if you can think of something we have learned uh, during the last uh, three years, it's how uncertain the world is, how yep. unexpected uh, events come uh, from one day to another to change all the fundamentals of society, right? From pandemic to uh, wars to uh, uh, logistics crisis, supply crisis, uh, nearshoring, reshoring, etc. None of us three years ago could have anticipated the, the, the level of change we have uh, gone through. The interesting thing is that out of all this turmoil that we're seeing uh, at a global scale, Costa Rica shines, as, as yep. you said. Uh, I've been told uh, by many people that Costa Rica is the utopia of the world. Uh, and, and, and when you think or reflect on why is that, is because we offer the fundamentals of a good uh, society and uh, everything around uh, well-being and and uh, creating opportunities and the right environment uh, to for people to 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 foster to to prosper. Right, as a small country uh, in Central America uh, of only five million people, Costa Rica has been known uh, for decades as a tourism destination. People uh, wanting to explore nature and, and adventure have found in Costa Rica the perfect location to connect with life essentials, with, with nature, with nice uh, beaches, rivers, mountains, uh, rainforests, great weather all year round, uh, friendly people, uh, safe uh, location, and so on. That shine 
from the tourism has been evolving during the last uh, few years to also great opportunities for investors uh, or digital nomads or uh, people that also want to uh, come to Costa Rica to do more than just uh, enjoying vacations. So uh, Costa Rica, it's a country that for 200 years has invested in education, making it public and mandatory. Uh, during the last 70 years, we have been also globally recognized as a peaceful country with no army, uh, which has created a society that, get, that is basically against conflict. It's a, it's a friendly, peaceful yep. uh, society in which you really uh, develop a lot of uh, friends. In the 70s, meaning like 50 years ago, uh, the, cost, the country also uh, became very innovative because we started doing uh, environmental conservation. Well, it was not popular when oil was uh, a, uh, ubiquitous, uh, available everywhere and very low cost. We said, you know what, we're, not gonna, we're gonna take a different route to our uh, development, which is a sustainable development. So we uh, banned uh, oil exploration and we started to have public policies oriented to, towards conservation and preservation of our environment. And that made us different uh, from the rest of the world. These days in which sustainability and conservation, it's, uh, it's so important. Uh, we have 50 years of tradition on that. It's not five yeah. years, 10 years or 20 years. We have really walked the talk for the last, uh, 50 years, and that has made us also a uh, uh, global leader in terms of conservation, in terms of sustainable development, which has at the same time attracted many companies and many individuals that, that have that uh, sense of purpose and that uh, sense of creating better uh, societies. Uh, at a corporation level, we approved uh, law uh, like 30 years ago, it's called Free Zones uh, Law, which basically made it attractive to companies to establish, to relocate uh, here in Costa Rica and obtain uh, interesting tax uh, incentives, uh, advantages, together with stability, democracy, location in the same uh, time zone of the U.S., uh, two ports, one in the Pacific, one in the uh, Caribbean, uh, and of course, talent, uh, an attractive hub for yep. more than 300 different multinationals uh, that decided to operate from Costa Rica, despite being a small country, uh, despite being a boutique uh, country, they have decided to establish their uh, regional headquarters here in, in, in Costa Rica. And what has happened over the last uh, few years, and that was accelerating during pandemic, were also uh, laws, legislation, that now is targeting individuals. Individuals, either as a digital nomads or as uh, investors. We have approved these two laws that make it easy, attractive, safe, secure, uh, to relocate uh, in Costa Rica if you are investing uh, or if you're working for a foreign company and uh, you just want to uh, live in this uh, piece of uh, paradise. Of paradise, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think at a global level, you know, Costa Rica is, I think you mentioned there, a utopia. You know, a lot of people, you know, always get concerned about investing out of their own country just because they like they may not know it, but I think once you've been down here to Costa Rica and seen its greatest asset, which I believe are its people, you know, it's educated, you know, I think you said there it's passive people, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it is a utopia down here. Uh, and I think that, you know, there aren't many people, I don't think I've ever met someone that came to Costa Rica and going, I hated that, you know, uh, because it's beautiful, great people. And I mean, it's an amazing environment and it's a very young country as well, just in general, when you look at it, I mean, it's not that overdeveloped and thank God it's not. And I don't think it ever will be just because of the environmental, you know, uh, studies that are required when ever doing anything big here. So, you know, I think of course we've done a great job of protecting that. And I think that protects people's assets uh, over a long term when investing here as well. But I mean, yeah. where do you believe that the growth and investment in Costa Rica will be in the next five years, Pedro? 
Yeah, so to support what you just said, uh, Richard, uh, this is something that has been like that for decades, right? This yep. is not a new government trying to sell that image to the world, uh, but really something that was uh, has a strong bedrock, which is yep. education, stability, rule of law, uh, all this democracy in, in Latin America, and, and so on. So that's the foundation for uh, many new projects in different areas. We, our intention is to attract uh, a type of investors and a, a type of companies that are aligned to our vision. And our vision is sustainable development understood by what is known as the three Ps, people, profit, and planet. If it's someone, yeah. someone just wanted to uh, make money, maybe this is not the right location because you will face some public policies and some uh, cultural uh, orientation towards also protecting the environment, also towards protecting people and, and, and have this uh, social impact. So really it's people or companies that are conscious about this comprehensive development model of uh, planet, uh, uh, people and profit or prosper prosperity. In other words, environmental, social, and financial uh, return. So that's the type of investors we want to bring on that, that basically can raise the bar for our country in that uh, sense. And from there, many things from uh, uh, private equity investors that want to invest in local startups or SMBs, to people that want to invest in, in real estate. Uh, real estate that, again, it's conscious with the environment. So maybe Costa Rica is not the right location for these mega hotels, mega projects, thousands of rooms in a single location, or, or even uh, houses development that are not aligned to our environmental and yep. conservation conscious. So it's more boutique. Uh, it's more uh, something that has this kind of impact uh, and not uh, something that is massive or that will uh, not is aligned to that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that Costa Rica has done great, which is not, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's not being penny foolish and pound wise. It's it's basically they are pound wise from the point of view of being that like you know that they are Costa Rica is willing to make less money, but to have a sustainable country and take care of its people. And I think that that can be seen as it's amazing. And that even comes down to food. And I know that that's something really weird, but like people come to Costa Rica and go, wow. I never knew food tasted like that. Or when I eat, I don't feel bloated. Like everything is fresh here. And that's why I say to people sometimes is, you know, Costa Rica has never really suffered. And I mean, suffered from the point of view of like, okay, there was a civil war, you know, back in the late forties, but like, since then, it's not been that like, again, anything major has happened like that's happening in Ukraine at the moment, but like, it's just a very peaceful country that has, like again, and it's not suffered, which is a good thing. It keeps like it as it is. It keeps the people like it as it is. Because whereas you look at the neighbors of Costa Rica, they are completely different than Costa Rica. Yeah, I mean, uh, what you mentioned, which was a civil war, it was really uh, people against the uh, fraudulent elections that happened at that yep. point. But it was not really like, of course, it was. There was some tension there, but never as, as in other uh, countries. It lasted for a very short period of time and it was just people demanding uh, respect for the elections. Since then, which happened in, in the late 40s, last century, uh, Costa Rica has enjoyed a very peaceful democracy. As I said before, this is the uh, oldest democracy in, in the region. And yeah, somehow the country is an exception to the region in which usually there's uh, some uh, turmoil and and uh, social uh, challenges. Uh, I guess because that's the type of society we want to build, we realize there is a trade-off, meaning that by not doing, let's say, uh, oil exploration, we, we will, we will uh, leave money on the table 
or by not uh, promoting businesses that are, for example, uh, connected to, to the military. It's, it's also a, a trade-off. But we really believe that uh, development has to do not much or not that with not, not that much with transforming economies and growing GDP, but really with uh, transforming people's lives and uh, promoting uh, well-being society in which, yeah, we're not a rich country, we're not a high-income country, we're a middle-income country, but people enjoy high-income country standards of education, healthcare, uh, stability, and the, and, the, and, the, and the air you you breathe, right? So yeah. in, in somehow we prefer that over uh, having uh, luxuries or uh, just being a, a high-income rich country. Well, I mean, Costa Rica is always comes out in, you know, some of the happiest countries in the world. And I think that, you know, we, we know why that is. And it's amazing. Again, you may have these amazing economies in these countries, but it's these people come here. You know, they have vacation homes here. They come and live here. They retire here. You know, they become digital nomads here. There is something very unique about this country. You know, I think my long term fear is that like that five million is going to become 10, 15 and it's going to be busy. I mean, maybe not just because I love the. We don't have tons of highways everywhere. I love that roads aren't paved. I think it keeps it authentic and I think I keep, it keeps it raw. And once a road gets paved, you know, development usually happens. So I know it needs to happen, but I love that it happens slowly here. Yeah, it's part of the adventure uh, here in Costa Rica, not having all the infrastructure of a developed uh, country. And it's it's part of the ride, enjoying the, the nature, slow down, uh, take it easy. And uh, of course, uh, with a reasonable level of, of, of comfort, right? Yeah. But, uh, hey. yeah it's, a, it's a unique country. I always say that those dirt roads are free Costa Rican massages. So yeah, <laughs> I love them. But you know, anyway, here we focus more on kind of helping people invest in Costa Rica, you know, when it comes to real estate developments and also tourism here kind of, you know, shaping that. I mean, I've had clients that have come to me before that said like, Rich, I want to do this big development. And I'm like, guys, I'm not touching that. It's not sustainable and it's not boutique and it's not authentic. I will not do that. Or, hey, yeah. I want to put a casino. I'm, like, I'm out. I'm not touching that. Like, it's important to me of like, I'm aligned with the country in which my kids, you know, my wife is from, my kids are being brought up in and that I'm about to hopefully get citizenship in. So, but I mean, based on this, I mean, what advice would you give to anyone looking to make an investment in Costa Rica? Uh, and, you know, what things should they consider? Yeah, we just recently approved two relevant laws for this profile of investors. One is uh, a law known as uh, law to attract investors uh, which include both people that wants to invest as well as people that want to retire uh, here because they enjoy a pension or a rent from savings they have had in the past. The law basically demands, uh, grants uh, a residency to people willing to invest uh, more than $150,000, which is a very yep. uh, reasonable uh I agree. Uh, amount if you want to like buy a house or, or buy a farm or something like that. And uh, with this law, you can uh, import all your goods from uh, from abroad, meaning your 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 uh, I think it's vehicles your house. and furniture and yeah. Exactly furniture, your house, of course, your your uh, IT equipment, your computer, I etc. You can bring up to two cars uh without paying uh import duties that's a lot of that's a big advantage because uh import duties for cars here are like 80 yep. percent so uh you can uh, bring your car also uh you can uh enjoy 20 percent discount in uh when you're transferring uh goods meaning you're buying a land or a house etc it's uh it's it's it, there's an exemption there so that law is to attract investors or, or people that enjoy a rent or a, or a pension. The other law is to attract uh, digital nomads, which is also very attractive because it basically uh, uh, extends the uh, 
length of stay you can have here in, in Costa Rica from 90 days to one year or up to two years. If you demonstrate that you have uh, uh, an income from a company or for an employer outside of Costa Rica, uh, you have to demonstrate that your income is at least $3,000 per month or $4,000 per month if you are coming with your, with your family. And uh, basically it will give you uh, uh, security that there, no, there will be no taxes charged to you while you are here in Costa Rica, income tax, I mean. Uh, that was kind of a gray area in the yep. past uh, that you can use your international driver's license, meaning your, 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 license, your driver's license from the U.S. or from Canada or from uh, Europe, whatever, and use it here without going through the process yep. of, of getting a local. Oh, my, oh my God, I've, I've done that one. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Exactly. That you can open a bank account uh, without a lot of... Uh, uh, problems and, and yeah most important that you will not pay income tax here even for technology company employees that they get uh, like stock options or uh, yep. stock purchase plan or uh, uh, restricted stock units things like that that in some countries that is not clear uh, how to tax that if you're not living in the country and you're living abroad here the new legislation uh basically it's clear about uh, that you're a visitor to our country and we will not charge you for any uh, income tax. Of course, you have to pay here uh, uh, value added tax and, and regular tax as... as, as, as yep. Pedro, a question on the investor, you know, because I mean, it's been a while since that uh, actual law was passed, but the implementation of it is still like dragging its feet. There's still no clarity on that. I mean, you can still apply for residency, if you've invested more than 150,000, but all of the benefits that come with it still are not very clear. Do you, do you have any insight into that? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of a gray area because the law was approved last year, but the regulation of the law has not been approved yet. We went through a government transition in the last month in which that kind of uh, paused the, the efforts we were having to regulate. I yep. have the inside information that the new government is working on it. The Ministry of Presidency is working on it. On it. Fantastic. They, will, they would like to issue the, uh, the, the regulation as soon as possible because they realize that there's a lot of people in the situation that you just described. Of course, they can apply for the residency. Of course, they can uh, start the paperwork, but it's yep. not clear if they can obtain all these benefits I just uh, mentioned. So. Uh, we want to remove that uncertainty of the, of the way uh, immediately so that uh, people feel safe. Because uh, as you said, right now, it's, it's not clear. If, if, if you bring your car, probably you'll need to pay the taxes and you will be able to recover them after, after uh, the regulation passes because the law has already been approved, meaning that right. by law, you can enjoy those benefits. But the process on how to enjoy those benefits is, is not clear. So uh, yeah. we hope to have that expedited and, and clear as soon as possible so that everything is, uh, is uh, clear, transparent, easy, fast, and... Uh, Definitely. I mean, I think we'll, I, yeah, I mean, it's, we get quite a few questions on that from a lot of people just asking when that's going to be uh, implemented. And I think it was like, look, there's a transition of government. It's yeah. now in place. I mean, we're pushing on our side, I think was, you know, uh, a conversation that we had before. I know but, it's a priority for the new government. So I hope okay. it will be out in, in, in weeks. Uh, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. I mean, if you, I mean, where do you think the opportunity lies in investing in Costa Rica at the moment? Um, you know, based on everything you know, I mean, I'm not asking you to be an investment advisor, but I mean, which areas would you like to see more investment in Costa Rica? Yeah, so several areas. Of course, it will depend on the appetite and on the uh, purpose uh, that this investor may have. Uh, anything that has to do with sustainable businesses, sustainable activities is definitely an, an opportunity. Uh, if, let's say... Uh, you want to invest in agriculture, in food security. So something that is growing because there is a, an increased global demand is on things that are 
uh, organic, that are uh, bio, as it's called in, the, in, in, in Europe. Uh, because consumer, especially after pandemic, is more conscious about what they eat, and, and that has a tremendous growth opportunity. Things that are related to superfoods that make you feel healthier, better, uh, and so on. Of course, real estate, uh, as, as you mentioned before, because Costa Rica is a, it's a, it's a country that has several microclimates. So yeah, the usual or traditional play would be like a beach coastal uh, locations, but the country has more to offer than that. If people prefer like cool weather, uh, there are several mountains and several microclimates uh, that you can uh, uh, consider. Uh, it's good weather all year round. So that's also good because uh, it's not like a seasonal opportunities. Yep. Here you enjoy the same uh, uh, nice weather from January to December. So it's not like you will have a, 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 hot, a good season and a bad season or that you will enjoy more certain months of the year and then the other months of the year you will not because it's too cold or it's too hot. Uh, of course, we have rainy and dry season, but it's part of that, right? And uh, I've never uh, heard that uh, weather has been uh, a complaint. Uh, Best weather in the world here, man. Coming to, to, to Costa Rica. Costa Rica and rainy season is very attractive. I personally love rainy season because everything is I'm green. Because yep. you see the, the rivers with all its power. You see the, 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 the bird, wildlife comes out. The yeah, wildlife man, comes out and uh, it, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, Pedro, I know you're busy. So my last question for you, sir. If you inherited $500,000 and had to invest it into business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you invest it in? Uh, you just told me before that, that not as an, uh, uh, an, invest an investment advisor, but I will do my research. Uh, I, I really uh, think, Richard, that whatever you invest in it needs to be connected to your purpose in life, yep. uh, to your heart, not just to your uh, brain, yep. to what you like, to what you enjoy, so based on that, yeah, it could be a, a house in the coast or it can be a startup in the mountains or it can be a little data center using uh, renewable uh, energy from rivers. I like that. Uh, yeah, it depends on what are your personal interests. But uh, based on that, yeah, if, if you're a miner, if you are into crypto and blockchain, etc., maybe your contribution to the world is to uh, to do like a little uh, mine uh, or data center uh, next to a river and take that electricity from the water and do good to the planet while you are also going doing good to your business and creating jobs and uh, be part of a rural community and, and, and help the local school and help the local association to, to foster or promote education with uh, unprivileged uh, children and, and so on. I'm sure that uh, many ideas will come uh, if you have the passion, the purpose and the will to create a better society. Awesome. Well, Pedro, I really appreciate you taking the time out of what I know is a very busy day to talk to us here on the podcast. I'm sure that the uh, the listeners uh, loved hearing about this. And uh, I think for anyone that was looking to invest in Costa Rica, now it's very clear of, of why you should invest it. So Pedro, thank you very much for your time and, and have a great day. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the uh, 100th podcast there with Pedro Beirute. I think as you can see there, um, it's a very clear picture forward for Costa Rica uh, and it's going to continue to build on its strengths, um, which I think, you know, again, is, is Pedro really out, outlined there. Um, you know, I think its strength is its geography, its political climate, um, and also just the people. I mean, I think that I always say that Costa Rica's people are its number one asset. So, 
Um, so yeah, um, and on that note, I'd like to thank everybody that's been on the podcast for these 100 episodes. It's been great. Um, and I will continue to do them as long as uh, people still uh, say that they enjoy uh, and do, that they enjoy listening to us um, and us bringing this, them this information. Uh, remember, if you'd like to actually be a guest on the podcast, you can reach out as well. Um, it's always nice to have people reach out um, and for them to cover a topic that is of interest to them and that they're passionate about. Uh, it does not need to be specifically about, you know, real estate. It can be, you know, it can be anything from building or it can really be anything. Um, you know, it's, it's the idea of the podcast is just to provide information uh, about Costa Rica to people. Um, you know, we've just focused it on real estate and investing. But remember, guys, uh, if you've enjoyed these 100, these 100 podcasts, please give us a, a review, thumbs up. Um, you can also contact us directly, info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. And uh, here's to the next 100, guys. I appreciate all your support. Um, and I'll uh, see you in the next, the next 100 of one podcast. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast. Bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica 